Well, it's a beautiful spring day, just one of those days when it's really great to be outside. Birds are chirping in the trees, lawnmowers are going in the background in neighbors' gardens, and it's the sort of day when it's just a joy to be able to be outside and do little things in the garden. And I'm going to show you how to prune and train climbing roses today. And for that, you'll need a pair of pruners, a good pair of gloves because they're thorny, and some twine to tie them in with. Now the trick or technique that I'm going to show you is really nothing new. It's been around for hundreds of years, but I'm kind of surprised really how few people know about it. And I think after I teach it to you, you'll be very pleased to try it out in your garden because it's going to give you a lot more flowers. It's going to bring the flowers down closer where you're going to see it. And it's going to make, I think, a very nice feature in your garden. This variety that I'm using here is one of David Austin's roses. I like the strong, vigorous growing ones that will get to about five or six foot because you can train them as mini climbers. There are climbing roses that will grow 12 to 15 foot, maybe even 30 foot tall, some of the really big strong ones. But in today's gardens, we're looking for smaller growing varieties. And these are ideal because they will make a climbing rose that's about five or six foot tall. And that is much more in scale with today's garden. Now, what I'm doing is in training these plants, and you can see from this shoot that I have trained in from last year, that what we're doing is we're redirecting the growth horizontally so that then we have a patial dominance in all of these shoots and these were the shoots that carried the flowers for last year. So we're channeling the growth instead of being up high on the plant down horizontally so that we get many more shoots and many more flowers. By tying them down horizontally, you're taking the natural process, which is called a patial dominance, and turning it into growing all these little shoots that when they grow up, each produce flowers on their tips. The end result is that you get a beautiful trained specimen like this one that's loaded with lots of big, fragrant flowers that really is a joy to have in the garden. Now, when you look at the individual shoots on the plant, you will see there's two sorts. There's these older shoots here, which have a brown, more gray color. And then there are young, juicy shoots like these ones. And these are the healthy, strong growing ones that are going to produce all the flowers next year. So what we're going to do in pruning and training this plant is cut out the old wood and then leave the young shoots so that we can train those back in. So with the pruners, we're going to start by cutting out the old shoots from last year. They have already finished flowering. The wood is not so growthy. So that's the stuff that we want to get rid of. So we cut them right back just removing the old string from last year that we had them tied in and then just getting rid of those and leaving the young shoots. So now I've removed all of the old growth from last year and we're left with these young, fresh, flexible shoots and it's time to tie those in, decide which ones are going to go best along at whatever levels and looking at this one here, I've tied it in at the side and now it's time to take it and train it horizontally, bending it down as low as you can without breaking it. And this would be a good level here for this one. So holding it in place, then just with a piece of twine, tie it to the trellis or the frame like so. And then you can put another tie in the middle just to neaten it up and keep it in place. And then when you've got that one in place, then take a look at the other stems and see where they're going to work. So I see this one here is going to be pretty low on the bush, so I'm going to try to get it as low as I can. And then I'll come back to you in a minute when I get the job done. So as you see, I have now built a series of horizontal layers, 
each one of these will now produce shoots with apical dominance that as they grow up, each of these then will carry flower stems, and so this will become a wall of flowers. And this technique will work on a trellis, on a fence, on a wall, on an arbor, anywhere where you're going to be able to enjoy beautiful, gorgeous roses flowering in the summertime from the ground up to the top of the device that you're tying it to. This is David Wilson. Enjoy your gardening. It's good for us and it's very good for our environment too.